glory that rose up Jesus from the dead brings you into a brand new dimension of life. You're not only a new person inside, but your whole life now has changed because you now walk in the glory of God. Yes, yes, And that's important, I'll tell you why. Because unless the world sees a glorified you, they won't want it. It's, it's a whole new day. It's a whole new ball game. It's a whole new experience. Being raised. By the way, we're getting ready for another water baptism. We have a wonderful testimony. You mind if I share with the folks? Sure. Yeah, that's all right. Unless you want to. Yes. Can I find some clarity in my life and open myself up? Yeah. Here he is. Clarity is becoming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every day. Thursday afternoon, this brother was in my in the office. And we had conversation, and before long we had prayer. Because this brother, we can now call him brother in the Lord. He gave his heart to Christ. He gave his heart and asked Jesus to come in. Born again. He's looking for water baptism. If any of you have not been water baptized, we'll let you know when it's going to happen so that you can partake in this beautiful experience that we're demonstrating here today. God wants you to understand that you're a new man, not only by being in Christ by virtue of your confession, but by being in Christ in your baptism. May I add, there's a little difference here. I don't want to get too deep theologically, Pastor Stan, but there is a little difference. When you give your life to the Lord, it's the right thing to do, obviously. It's called born again. Yes. But there is a natural progression that is required of you when you give your heart to the Lord. It feels good, and the seed of the Word of God has been planted into your heart, which is a good thing. It's the right thing. And you responded to it. Watch now. Watch now. I mean, know that the, the parable of the sower indicates, watch, the parable of the sower indicates that the seed, which is the word of God or Jesus himself, was planted. Some was on open ground. And the birds came and plucked it out. Some was on stony ground. Some was on thorny ground. It took root a little bit. But it was crushed by persecution or choked by occupation in this world. But the fourth one was good ground. Yes. And so, you see the difference here? A lot of people have accepted Christ, for instance, at Billy Graham Crusades. Yes. Only four, three to four percent continue to be churched. Right. Out of all those millions. Because they, they did the right thing, they responded, but there was not a progression to make sure that my ground was good ground to produce. How many know you have to follow these steps in order to become productive? That's right. If you're not water baptized, you're missing an element. That Paul makes it very clear. You're burying and identifying yourself with the death of Christ. How many understand that today? It's important that you see this. You must go through the waters of baptism. Why? Because you're identifying yourself with His death. Amen. Amen. It's not just accepting Christ as your personal Savior and just think, well, I'm okay now. It's following through with great commitment to following the Lord. And in the same glory, you're raised in newness of life. Now I want to close this part here. After the resurrection, as I mentioned to you, that means that you have been resurrected with him into newness of life. Now, I'm done with the scriptures. He said, I will return. Why? Watch now, watch now, watch now. At the resurrection, the Lord ate with them again. Isn't that right? The Lord ate again after the resurrection. Right. And then Paul makes it clear. 
when he said, when you come together, do this as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death till he Watch, watch now. Isn't that beautiful? All of this beautiful experience, station number one, number two, number three, and number four, is held together in your life. It is, watch now, it's like bookends. It holds the whole story of your redemption together. It begins with station number one. Yes. Eating with Christ at the table. Yes. And his return will take you to another table, the last table, Man, all, yes, which yes, is the yes, marriage yes, feast yes. of the Lamb, yes, 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 where yes. the fourth cup will be raised at that time. So between now until you brought to heaven, you've got the experience of this. These are the most vital experiences and benefits and covenantal rights, if you will, constitutional rights or, or covenantal rights that you a human being can possibly have. Are you understanding this today? Yes. Yeah. I want to make sure that we give everybody an opportunity today to, to, to just allow this to penetrate your heart and soul. Because this is vital for you. It's vital for your spiritual survival. There's so many distractions out here. So many distractions. And unless you keep these front and center in your heart, you'll be easily drawn from them. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, today, thank you, we thank you for the four plus two. Thank you for these stations that we have here before us today. Thank you for the broken body of our Lord as station number one. And his blood of the covenant and his resurrection validated that very, very tr great truth and fact that that was his broken body and shed blood for us. So right now, Father, we thank you for the broken body of our Lord. We thank you for Gethsemane making the right choices, showing us that we have to make right choices. And then the death of our old man with Christ on the cross. This is so vital to us because now we're free from the old man. We're free from the old sin, from the old Adamic sinful nature, which had the wrath of God and the judgment of God upon us. We thank you, Lord, that at the tomb we were buried in water baptism with him in the likeness of his death, but we've also been raised in the newness of life. For if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So Father, we pray that as we close this segment of our teaching on 4 plus 2, this will be a moment of great decision. Perhaps, Father, there are some here watching here today live or watching by YouTube or listening by CD that need to make a decision to move on to station number two, number three, and number four, and then new newness of life, and then living for the Lord in this newness of life with the same glory and strength and power from the Holy Spirit. It's called living in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name that we will be drawn by the Holy Spirit into the better, deeper, more rewarding experience of life with God. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you're here today and you desire today to give yourself wholly and completely to the Lord and claim your covenantal blessing of forgiveness of sins and strength in the Holy Spirit, then raise your hand right now, I will include you. Thank you throughout this room. The blessing of the Lord be upon each and every one of you. Give your life to Him completely. Give your life to Him completely. Father, for these that have raised their hands, we want to claim the blood of Christ in our life, but Lord, we want to live in a newness of life. The old things have passed away. Help us to live in the resurrection power and glory of God into the newness of life. So that we can set our affection on things above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God from this day forward. We claim the forgiveness of sins through the blood of Jesus Christ today. And we acknowledge those sins. We say, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us of those sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness today. We give ourselves wholly and completely to you. 
and ask you, Lord, that you prepare our hearts for the Lord's table today. In Christ's name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a good clap offering. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let's stand together as we read today from 1 Corinthians as we prepare our hearts to come around the Lord's table today. 1 